threads of the universe. It captures the essence of creation and the interconnected nature of all existence. One, two, three. The Vesica Pistis. The Vesica Pistis is a key shape in sacred geometry. It's created by joining two circles of the same size with each circle's center on the other circumference. This intersection forms an almond like shape at the center, symbolizing the union of dualities like spirit and matter or heaven and earth. It represents balance and harmony. This shape has been held in high regard by various cultures and spiritual traditions, including early Christianity, where it symbolized the divine feminine womb as a source of creation. The basic of Jesus has been around for thousands of years and can be seen in ancient art, architecture, and religious iconography across Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Polyhedra. 
tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. Each one has the same number of faces made from regular polygons and the same number of faces meeting at each vertex. These solids are named after the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, who linked them to the classical elements, fire, earth, air, water, and the universe. They're seen as the building blocks of the physical world and symbolize perfection and harmony in nature. You'll find platonic solids in various spiritual and philosophical traditions. They date back to ancient Greece and beyond, appearing in art, architecture, and mysticism. To build these shapes, you need to understand the symmetry and regularity that define them. Platonic solids are a key concept in geometry. They show how natural forms are connected and balanced. They're used in meditation, healing practices, and as tools for exploring the deeper structures of reality. They have profound spiritual and mathematical significance. The golden ratio, the golden ratio, which is shown in math as the Greek letter phi, is an irrational number. It's about 1.618. It represents a special ratio for a total of two numbers as to the larger number as the larger is to the smaller. This ratio shows up a lot in nature, art, architecture, and design. It symbolizes harmony and aesthetic perfection. The golden ratio has been celebrated since ancient times. It was used by the Greeks in the Parthenon. By Renaissance artists like Leonardo da Vinci and observed natural phenomena such as the arrangement of leaves and the spirals of shells. To find the golden ratio in a line segment, just divide it into two parts so that the total length divided by the longer part is equal to the longer part divided by the shorter part. You'll find this ratio in the proportions of the human body, galaxies, hurricanes, and even DNA. The golden ratio is more than just a mathematical concept. It's a principle that shows how the universe is beautifully and perfectly balanced, connecting art, nature, and science. The Fibonacci Spiral. The Fibonacci Spiral is a visual representation of the Fibonacci sequence, where each number is the sum of the two preceding ones, starting with 0 and 1. This sequence creates a spiral pattern that you'll often see in nature and design. The sequence was discovered by the Italian mathematician Fibonacci in the 13th century. It's closely related to the golden ratio. When you plot the numbers, you get a spiral that looks pretty close to the golden ratio as it goes along. You can see the Fibonacci spiral in lots of natural things, like the way leaves grow on a stem, how trees branch out, the pattern of pine cones, how artichokes flower, and the spiral shells of mollusks. It can also be found in galaxies and hurricanes. To make a Fibonacci spiral, start with a series of squares with side lengths equal to the Fibonacci numbers. Next, draw a quarter circle arc in each square to create a continuous spiral. The spiral shows how nature has a natural order and beauty to it, and how maths is a big part of that. The Taurus. The Taurus, a donut-shaped three-dimensional figure, is a fundamental form in sacred geometry. This shape represents the continuous flow of energy in the universe, symbolizing balance and harmony. In nature, the Taurus appears at various scales, from atomic structures to galaxies. Many spiritual practitioners believe the Taurus embodies the blueprint of creation, serving as a model for understanding the interconnectedness of all things. The unique property of the Taurus lies in its ability to turn inside out, while maintaining its form, which some interpret as a metaphor for the cyclical nature of existence. In meditation and energy work, visualizing a toroidal field around the body is thought to enhance one's connection to universal energy flows. Some researchers even propose that the human biofield has a toroidal shape, influencing the physical and spiritual well-being. The Torah continues to fascinate both scientists and spiritual seekers as a powerful symbol of unity and perpetual motion. Cymatics. Cymatics, the study of visible sound waves, reveals the intricate relationship between vibration and form. When sound frequencies are applied to mediums like water or sand, they create stunning geometric patterns that change with varying frequencies. This phenomenon demonstrates how sound can organize matter into coherent forms, a principle that resonates deeply with sacred geometry concepts. Cymatic patterns often resemble mandalas, flower-like shapes, and complex polygons which many interpret as visual representations of universal harmony. Some spiritual traditions view somatics as evidence that the universe is fundamentally vibrational in nature, with all matter and energy arising from cosmic frequencies. In healing practices, somatic principles are sometimes applied to balance the body's energy fields. The study of somatics bridges science and spirituality, offering a tangible way to observe how invisible forces can create order and beauty in the physical world. This field continues to inspire artists, scientists, and philosophers alike. 
64 tetrahedron grid. The 64 tetrahedron grid is a pretty complex geometric structure made up of 64 interlocking tetrahedra arranged in a specific pattern. When you look at the whole grid, you'll see that it forms a larger octahedron. In the world of sacred geometry, this structure is often called the matrix of creation or the vector equilibrium. Some theorists believe this grid is linked to concepts in quantum physics and unified field theory, suggesting it represents the fundamental structure of space-time. The number 64 has significance in various spiritual and scientific contexts, such as the 64 hexagrams of the Yin Ching and the 64 codons in DNA. Some energy healers use the visualizations of the 64 tetrahedron grid to balance and align chakras. This geometric form is also associated with concepts of sacred architecture and is believed by some to be a key to understanding the organization of matter and energy in the universe. The complexity and symmetry of this grid continue to fascinate those exploring the intersection of geometry, spirituality, and physics. Egg of Life. The Egg of Life is a sacred geometric pattern consisting of seven interlocking circles arranged in a hexagonal structure. It is considered the second stage in the formation of the Flower of Life following the Seed of Life. This pattern is believed to represent the cellular structure of the first stages of embryonic development. In sacred Three, geometry, the egg one, of life two, associated with creation one, is, one, is often linked four, to the seven days of one, creation two, various three, spiritual four, traditions. The seven circles are thought to correspond to seven chakras or the energy centers of the human body. Six, Some practitioners use the one, egg of two, life in meditation four, and practices, believing it has seven, the power to balance energy two, and enhance creativity. Four, the geometry of the one, egg of life two, is also four, found to be as the spacing of the seven circles corresponds to the spacing of the nodes. Scale. This connection between geometry, life, and harmony continues to intrigue those studying patterns in the line of existence. Four. Sixty. the Philippine military a hundred times better than the Chinese military. Even though China has a larger arsenal and many more active military personnel, this question confuses even the top military analysts and experts. Some of you might think that military power directly depends on the size of the arsenal. But is this really true? The Chinese military is one of the most powerful and largest military forces in the world. The PLA has approximately 2 million active members, making it the largest force in terms of manpower. There are about 500,000 reservists and substantial militia force that can be mobilized if necessary. China's official defense budget for 2024 is about $230 billion dollars Second only to America, this substantial investment allows for modernization and expansion of military capabilities. The Chinese military strength is characterized by its large and well-equipped forces, substantial but rapid modernization and expanding global influence. China's military one, power two, three, is four, impressive, one, with advanced one, fighter jets, four, large naval fleets, two, and lots of ground force two, equipment. Three, four, five, it likely has three, one of the world's one, largest two, three, tank four, fleets, a strong four, air force one, two, with thousands of airplanes, and a rapidly expanding one, navy two, with aircraft four, carriers four, and nuclear six, submarines. One, it's two, estimated three, four, that by 2030, seven, the one, Chinese two, Navy will be the number one Navy in the world, surpassing even four, the United States. If you're new to this channel, one, two, welcome. Four, I'm Dave Rome's, ten, and I'm currently one, living in the Philippines. Four, I've recently teamed up with one, incredible Filipinos and a fellow Canadian who share a common goal, which is spreading the truth about the Philippines and showcasing it to the world. Our main target is the global audience. I consider the Philippines my second home, and that's why we're deeply committed 
to this mission. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more inspiring stories. Give us a thumbs up and share with so your friends to spread the truth. You might be wondering how the Philippine military could compare to China, especially considering what we've said so far about the Chinese military. But it's important to remember that a large arsenal does not always mean it's the best quality. Quantity and quality are not the same. Quantity does not guarantee quality. Some experts say that China might not maintain its equipment well. Having a lot of gear or equipment is one thing, but keeping it in top condition and ready to use at any time is a different thing. Also, you might want to ask yourself a, an important question. Are the Chinese military personnel properly trained to handle this large arsenal, especially with the rapid changes in their military technology? Can they effectively use and maintain this high-tech equipment? Are they ready to adapt quickly to new types of warfare? Military strength involves more than just having equipment, gear, and personnel. It's a complicated mix where things like real combat experience but the quality of the forces are very important. On the other hand, the Philippines has a smaller military. But again, size is not everything. A strong military is not just about equipment and the number of personnel. The Philippine military is known for high quality gear, which they get from America. And, of course, you know that America is known for its top notch equipment. The Philippine military equipment, while not as a butler, is well maintained and used wisely. Filipino soldiers are well trained and dedicated, ready to handle any challenge. Furthermore, the Philippines regularly trains with major powers. America, which has extensive experience in warfare, which it gained from its military adventures, around the world. But it's not only about equipment and personnel. Strategy is key. It's also about the human element of warfare. The ability to adapt, think quickly, and make important decisions during battles. The Philippine military is strong in these areas. Why? Because it fought many wars, both within the Philippines and overseas. Remember the Battle of Yeltaan? The Battle of Yeltaan fought from April 22nd to 23rd, 1951. During the Korean War, it happened near the village of Yeltaan in central South Korea. This battle was part of the bigger fight for control over important areas on the Korean Peninsula. Despite being greatly outnumbered, Filipino troops showcased incredible bravery and resilience. Also, the Filipino spirit plays a big role. Their resilience, determination, and strong sense of duty. These traits define the Philippine military and have helped them through many conflicts and challenges. Furthermore, the Philippine military has a deep sense of unity. When facing tough situations, they come together, support each other, and work as a team. So even if the Philippine military doesn't have as many troops as China, they excel at any other important area. Their Three, focus four, is on the quality four, instead of numbers. The focus two, is on strategies, smart five, strategies, one, two, and their strong four, spirit six, is in a powerful two, force that four, China five, cannot resist. Seven, it's clear now one, why a smaller two, force like the Philippines four, might seem eight, stronger. One, one is not just about the quantity four, of soldiers nine, or quantity one, of equipment. It's also about experience. They are able to adapt, plan, and act under pressure, which comes from real combat experience. Filipinos have resisted three colonial powers for nearly 400 years, gaining valuable experience that's hard to match. China has not experienced any colonization by three powerful imperial powers, America, Spain, and Japan. China, despite having one of the largest armies in the world, has not been in a major conflict since the late 20th century. Their last big battle was the Sino-Vietnamese War.
which ended in 1978. Compare that with the conflicts that the Philippines has been engaging in since 1500s. China lacks the real combat experience. Drills and simulations cannot replace actual combat situations. On the other hand, the Philippines has faced many internal and external conflicts in recent decades. Don't forget, the Philippines recently, in 2017, faced insurgencies, rebellions, and total disputes. This has resulted in a battle-tested combat-ready force that have become skilled in asymmetric warfare, meaning they can effectively compete against larger or better equipped enemies. Don't forget, Filipinos resisted three colonial powers, powerful colonial powers. Their strategies and tactics come from real experience and necessity, which cannot be duplicated in training exercises. Final thoughts. The Philippines may have fewer troops, but it focuses on quality of its personnel and equipment. Its soldiers are well-trained, well-experienced, and motivated, and their equipment is well-kept and used effectively. It's not saying it again. It's not just about having the most soldiers or equipment. What matters is how well those resources are used. Do you think the Philippine military works better than the Chinese military? If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to hit subscribe and like buttons so you don't miss any future updates.
120. So welcome back listeners, we're here for the latest Arcade Attack podcast, I've got another really big treat, we've had Sean Cooper, we've had Mark Webley, I've got, well, Alex Travis here, another Bullfrog legend, so thank you so much for your time today. Well, thanks for the invite. <laughs> a pleasure to all else, trust me. Um, before we get into your sort of career at Bullfrog, Alex, I'd love to know how you, you sort of fondest memories of gaming and what, why you've grown up, how you got into you know, your earliest and fondest memories, basically. Well, so... Um, I've always been like a bit of a gamer, um, like, and obviously that means growing up before computers, uh, it was just any sort of gaming, card games, board games, what have you. Um, myself, my dad and my brother, we used to play an awful lot of games and we were living in a very, very small space, so what we used to do was just make up our own games, our own little board games, we kind of take it in terms to do that, and then like D&D was a was a very big part of our life growing up, um, and all sorts of things. Obviously, when computers came out, it was a it was a sort of natural progression to that. Yeah, really. So yeah, always been gaming, and all, specifically always been making games as well. Yeah. Well, do you remember the first game you ever made? Then was it? I, I take you made it before Ballfrog, Is that right? Oh yeah. Like um, the, the the first games we ever made were like like I said, we just these these oh, board games. And I think one of our uh, most enjoyable. I mean, we came up with our own set of rules for sort of miniatures battles. Um, but then probably our most successful was we did this really cool. So there's three different ways you can use this session. At the end of the day, remember, your effort always determines the outcome. Get your gloves on. Get your mind right. Your first combination coming up nonstop is a one, two, three for 10 seconds. Let's get it, guys. All right, guys, in 10 seconds, let's go. 10 minutes nonstop. Insanity. 10 seconds. One, two, three. Ready? Let's go. Freestyle. 30 seconds. Let's go. Just above knees. Hold it. Right. Fifteen seconds. And go back into a one, two, three. And we hold that. Put that bad boy. Pretend a two, one. Let's go. Ten second rest. One, two, three is coming up next. Come on, guys. Two, let's go, one, two, three. Right, 10 seconds. 
two, three, two. So four, three, two, one, go. One second. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. 